Rapid fire helps. Yo, it's John Bo D, and we're gonna be editing some underwater photos today on the iPad Pro in Lightroom CC. So let's just dive right into this. So follow along, grab your tablet, grab your phone. Let's edit some photos. I'm gonna take your underwater photography from zero to hero, from scuba to snorkel. Welcome to this episode of editing photos on the iPad Pro. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to get in and edit some photos. I'm already going to assume that you have an underwater camera that you can go take photos with. If you guys want to see an in-depth tutorial on how I shoot photos underwater, including the gear I use and some techniques, let me know in the comments down below and I will make that video ASAP. Alright then, let's just get down to it. On our first photo, dang, what up with this? That looks like a blurry blurry photo but you know what a lot of photos underwater are going to look like this and there's a couple settings you can do to make magic so the first thing i always like to do guys is i always like to hit the auto button um, obviously that didn't do a lot at all so i'll show you the magic trick here so obviously i'm gonna add some more contrast to it a little more black to kind of give it more definition now this is where the dehaze button really shines I mean, just look at that. Look at that difference. So I'm adding a little more clarity, some dehaze. You don't want to make it too muddy, but that looks good enough. Maybe just a little bright now, no more brightness. This is where you can really make the changes that you need to make. So it took me a while to learn this, um, but I learned it on a tutorial actually that's on the iPad Pro that I would definitely check out. I think it's in their learn section. But it's all about changing the color temperature up. So obviously if you look at that, it's kind of like, uh, it looks like someone peed in the water. Totally not cool. But once you start bringing up the magentas, look at the magic right there. Just like, look at that magic. So let's just crop it a little bit. Now look at the before and after. Look at that. Boom. That is a huge difference. Boom, 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 boom. And that is mostly from the color sliders. Everything else is just getting rid of the haze in the water. So other things I might do in this photo, just for fun, is I would probably, I love adding uh, gradients. Where, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. So I've been in quarantine so long, I forgot to how to edit photos, man. So I kind of like to add some gradients, mainly just kind of want to like, make it look like there's more of a light kind of casting down on her. It kind of emphasizes these little lights here. So I'm just gonna kind of do that. And I don't know, let's go back to the colors a little bit. It looks like there's too much yellow. And you're gonna have to like uh, experiment with this guys because you gotta just go and try to find the colors that match. It's hard to get the skin tones perfect. Um, I like it when the, the sand is a little white and her skin's a little orange. That looks good enough for me for now. You know? So yeah, let's move on to the next photo. Now, same thing again here. Look how cloudy this is. It looks, if you were to look at this photo through your camera, you'd be like, dang, man, uh, this sucks. Um, when I first started editing underwater photos, I didn't know much about the colors, so I would just try to make the best out of that turquoise hue. You know, I'd come in, I'd adjust the contrast, and I'd kind of be like, damn, I, maybe I'm not using the right gear, but, it really, the secret really is in the colors. Um, and this is why it's important to have a, a red filter. Um, if you're not shooting with a mirrorless camera, um, if you have a GoPro and you're shooting in snorkel um, depth water, a red filter comes really nice because it gets rid of a lot of the blues and allows you to, um, to get a better color. So yeah, like I said guys, the dehaze button comes in clutch right here. I'm not in love with this photo, but I thought it would be a good comparison photo just to show you how bad it looked before to how you can get it to look like, you know what I mean? It's still super grainy and super, um, you know, but maybe let's see what happens when we just bring the grain up. Let's make it look kind of vintage-y. Um, 
I like to go into this and kind of go into the reds to kind of maybe give it like a little like Polaroid-y vibe. Uh, a lot of time in vintage looking stuff, I feel like they boost the reds in the... Let's maybe add some more blues to the highlights right here. These, I use the, um, the curves to do like stylized things. Um, I don't, these aren't necessarily necessary when you're editing, but if you want to add a little stylistic, little subtle color changes, I think they come in, in clutch. Let's add a little more clarity here. And just for fun, let's, oh wait, we want to go to the optics, get rid of that. Always have these settings on, just cause, just cause, I'm not going to be scientific, just cause, all right? Noise reduction, sure, why not? Cool. I mean, it's not my favorite photo at all. But look, look at the difference. Oh my gosh, it's like there's no photo there. And now there's something there. So anyways, next. I like this photo. I think this photo is dope. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of crop it so it looks a little better. Maybe like right there. Boom. I wish I got her feet, but I didn't. This one's a little easier to edit. So I'm gonna see what happens when I push the auto button. Already that doesn't look bad, just with the auto button. And the reason this photo looks really a lot better than the other photos is because of my underwater auto white balance setting in the a7 III. Um, it does actually a pretty accurate job in the color temperatures of the water and the skin. Um, other cameras, if you don't have an underwater auto feature, you, you might want to, you'd have to, you can do it manually, or you can just, if it's a raw photo, you can do it in post and it won't be too much of an issue. But let's keep going in this one. Boom. Contrast for sure. Got to get that contrast, boy. Um, let's add a little, I kind of like a little orange just because her skin looks a little washed out. It looks like a zombie. She's like ascending to the light, you know, like this is a spiritual experience photo right here. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, too much. Too much magenta makes it look like weird. Unless you're going for like a stylistic pink swimsuit vibe or something, I don't know. I like that. I don't want too much magenta in the sky. See how the sky is kind of magenta out? So this is where I would want to bust out a freaking ra a gradient filter. You know, you gotta bust out color. Let's change that back to, oh wait, green. Yeah, give me a little separation between the sky and the, yeah, I like that, I like that. Now, this is cool. I, I like the correction here. So let's look at it before, after. Boom, totally different, bro. It's crazy what these two freaking temperature sliders do to underwater photos, man. It is crazy. So just to add a little pop, a little oomph, a little swag, one might say, try to pop up some, like the sun is shining on her like divinity. She'd be like, it's Saturday. What up? Go party after this. All right, anyways, so that's that one. Booyah, booyah. So y'all are getting the, uh, um, the general idea of underwater photos. The most important thing, ooh, the auto button didn't make that look too bad. The most important thing, guys, basically, if you're just gonna take away from this is the dehaze. <laughs> And then the temperature sliders. And sometimes the auto button gets the temperature right. But more often than not, it doesn't. So, doom, boom. I took some pictures of this girl in the water. A lot of them were like weird booty pictures. And that's the thing about being underwater and shooting photos, unless you have scuba or a really nice weight belt and you can hold your breath, um, you're really gonna be shooting blind. Um, so that's why you're gonna have it in rapid fire mode and just shoot uh, a lot of the time underwater. Unless you got a good weight belt. And yeah, that's another video, holler at me. Black and white looks pretty cool actually. Hey, when all else fails, just bring up that dehaze and the clarity. Black and white, I don't make this like a French, you know, pretend there's like a French poem behind this photo, up the grain. I don't speak French, obviously, but you know, if I did, it'd be sexy. Boom. 
Here's another kind of interesting portrait, I guess. Like I said, I'm shooting blind most of the time underwater. Um, unless I have my weight belt on, then I can like breathe and just get a nice, nice composition. So auto, I mean the auto already looks pretty good. Dang, I could have just made this tutorial press auto. <laughs> but then I wouldn't have you guys watching and you wouldn't be having fun editing photos with me during quarantine. Um, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna bring the blacks down. I think, no, yeah, just bring the dehaze up a little bit. I didn't even mess with the colors. Like the auto button did a pretty good job. But you can tell like, like watch this, let me reset it. And then we just do auto. Uh, that looks, looks all right. You still wanna add some dehaze on it. But if I was to go to a photo like this, you know, and I was to get rid of all of them and then do auto, I mean, look how terrible that is. <laughs> that is not, you would not want that. So some photos auto works, some photos it doesn't. Um, but yeah, those are the four photos that we edited today. Um, I didn't do any wildlife. These are like underwater portraits. I wanted to, um, but yeah, but this usually works. I have a lot of pictures of turtles and dolphins and things like that, but it's basically the same thing. So, um, remember guys that it's all about the white balance in your camera. Um, if you have an underwater auto white balance, that thing is gonna come in so clutch. The a7 III actually does a pretty good job where I don't need a red filter. Um, but GoPro, um, definitely get a red filter. And if you want really good composition underwater, make sure you have a weight belt or you are scuba certified. All right, so that's it. That's how I edit underwater photos in Lightroom CC. I hope you got something out of that. I hope you're gonna take your photo game to the next level. I hope you guys are doing well in quarantine. I know it's getting boring, but the weather's getting nice and soon hopefully we'll be able to go out and start swimming and taking some cool photos and making dope content. So if you guys wanna see my full underwater photography tutorial, comment down below. I would love to make that. You can see the gear I use, the techniques I use, and some tips and tricks for when you go out for your under next underwater shoot, you'll be prepared because that is super important. It's been a struggle for me. I'm still learning, but you know what? We're going to get some dope content underwater. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bodie out.